Hi, this is Dr. A with a clean camera review video. We're going to look at specific tumor markers, um, mostly AFP, CA125, CEA, HCG, and PSA. Okay, so let's start with alpha fetoprotein or AFP. Uh, it is an abundant serum protein that synthesizes by fetal liver, you know, so in utero, right? And it is then also re expressed in certain types of tumor. Uh, it is often elevated in patients with hepatocellular carcinoma and germ cell tumors. It is a 70 kilodalton glycoprotein that is related to albumin. Uh, it normally functions as a transport protein, which albumin often does that too, right? And it is involved in regulating oncotic pressure in the fetus, and that's the pressure within you know, plasma, within fluids and stuff. The uh, upper limit of normal for serum AFP, alpha fetal protein, is approximately 15 nanograms per mil in adults. AFP is used for the diagnosing, staging, prognosis, and treatment monitoring of hepatocellular carcinoma, so liver cancer. Uh, it is also used for the classification and monitoring of therapy for testicular cancer and for tumor staging. High AFPs are seen basically in primary hepatoma, ovarian carcinoma, testicular embryonal carcinoma. The uh, methodology, it is measured by a variety of amino assays that are commercially available on automated amino assay analyzers. Uh, these are typically sandwich amino assays that rely on monoclonal or polyclonal antibodies directed towards uh, different regions of the alpha fetoprotein molecule. CA125, which is cancer antigen 125, also sometimes carbohydrate antigen 125, depends on when you're looking at. Um, it may be useful for the detection of ovarian tumors at an early stage or for monitoring of treatment without surgical restaging. Um, CA125 is expressed in ovary and other tissues of malaria duct origin and in ovarian carcinoma cells. It is only clinically accepted serologic marker for ovarian cancer and in a method the methodology are immunoassays using the OC125 and M11 antibodies. Other cancer antigen tumor markers, so cancer antigen or carbohydrate antigen tumor markers are either antigens on tumor cells or their antigens that are secreted by tumors. Um, their specificity is higher than the enzymes or the hormones. Um, CA153 and CA2729 is for breast cancer. CA2729 tends to be used more frequently. CA199 uh, is colorectal and pancreatic cancer, and they are generally used to monitor treatment. Obviously, they have to be elevated at, at diagnosis to then be able to be used to monitor treatment. Uh, and these markers are all available by immunoassays and are commonly ordered. So CEA, uh, CEA was discovered in the 1960s and it's a prototypical example of an aquafetal antigen. It is expressed during the development and then re-expressed in tumors similar to alpha fetal protein. The most widely used tumor marker for colorectal cancer, that's CEA, it is also elevated in lung, breast, and GI tumors. Uh, it is a large heterogeneous glycoprotein. Its molecular weight is approximately 200 kilodalton, so it's a pretty big molecule. Uh, it's part of the immunoglobulin superfamily and is involved in apoptosis, immunity, and cell adhesion. It is used as a tumor marker for colorectal cancer. It is used for prognosis, post-surgery surveillance, and to monitor response to chemotherapy. Of course, it has to be elevated at the onset in order for it to work for that. And the methodology, historically, it used polyclonal antibodies. Now it uses monoclonal antibodies, um, anti-CEA antibodies. Due to high heterogeneity of CEA, it is essential, again, that the same assay be used for serial monitoring, no switching between uh, types of assay or analyzers. And it is not recommended for screening asymptomatic individuals for colorectal cancer because CEA can be mildly you know, elevated, can be present in healthy individuals also, especially if they're smokers, by the way. All right, human chorionic 
Tourionic gonadotropin, or HCG, which is the pregnancy hormone. It is a dimeric hormone that's secreted by the trophoblast in the placenta to maintain a corpus luteum during pregnancy. It is a hormone that you test to detect pregnancy also. But in cancer, there is a non-endocrine production, so the tumors are producing this HCG. It is a 45 kilodalton glycoprotein that consists of alpha and beta subunits. Um, the clinical application is uh, it is used in the prognosis of ovarian cancer and the diagnosis of testicular cancer, and it is most useful marker for gestational trophoblastic diseases. Um, and it is tested usually via immunoassays with monoclonal capture and tracer antibodies. PSA, or prostate-specific antigen, it's a 28 kilodalton glycoprotein that's produced only in the epithelial cells of the acini and prostatic ducts, uh, so it's found in prostate. It regulates seminal fluid viscosity. It dissolves cervical mucus cap that uh, allows the sperm to enter for fertilization. Uh, in the female, and uh, low levels of PSA can be detected in serum of healthy men. Uh, there are two major forms that are found circulating in the blood, free PSA and complex PSA. Uh, prostate infection, prostate irritation, and BPH, which is benign prostatic hyperplasia or prostate enlargement, can result in an increased PSA. And so um, the use of PSA to monitor cancer progression has also been found useful after radiation or endocrine therapy. Annual screening of prostate cancer, for prostate cancer um, in men over 50 years old and in younger men at high risk is the major use of PSA, especially if they have a family history. A normal range for the PSA should be less than four nanograms per mil. And the factors to take into account when you test for PSA are the age, the PSA velocity, free P and the free PSA to total PSA uh, ratios. PSA velocity is how fast it's changing over time, okay? And it is measured by immunoassays that use enzyme fluorescence or chemiluminescence on automated immunoassay analyzers. And then DNA markers and receptors, there are two types of genes that lead to cancer. You have the oncogenes and the tumor suppressor genes. So if the oncogenes are turned on or present, then that can lead to cancer. If the tumor suppressor genes are turned off, then also those can lead to cancer. Uh, the HER2 oncogene, uh, the HER2 assays are becoming more widely available. There are uh, currently immunoassays available to measure serum levels of HER2 in patients with breast cancer. Uh, previously, HER2 was performed on a tissue sample, so it has, you know, they use this to evaluate breast cancer. BRCA1 and BRCA2 are genes that um, puts a woman at uh, higher risk of having breast cancer. It doesn't mean that she will, it's just, it's just a higher risk. Um, and then uh, there are also receptors that are used to determine whether hormone treatment is appropriate for patients with breast cancer. Um, so estrogen receptors and progesterone receptors are analyzed from biopsy samples. And part of that is, for example, um, if the cancer was estrogen positive, um, that means it feeds off of estrogen. You would definitely not want to do estrogen therapy because you could just feed the cancer. So anyway, uh, those are very uh, important to properly assess and then guide treatments of uh, breast cancer. And that being said, thank you.